okay uh dear brothers and sisters in uh, christ we thank our uh, lord for giving it another opportunity to discuss uh, about the wonderful words of life so as you all know last week we studied about the first world we seen so many things uh, about the first world how the first world existed and uh, we also saw how the first world was destroyed by water now what are the reasons that it was destroyed by water that there were giants uh, in the first world and there are giants were born because of the human and uh, angelic uh, relationship uh, which was uh, actually forbidden by god which is against the uh, god's will but uh, when uh, they joined when they united uh, in a uh, marriage so the children that were born to them were giants and these suppressed and dominated over the lower creation of the earth hence uh, god decided to destroy the first world and uh, how did this happen how did the angel mingle with the human uh, if you see in the first world they were given the wonderful uh, you see uh, power to manifest in the flesh and whenever they didn't want they can uh, change over to spirit being so whenever they came in the fleshly being uh, they had a human relationship with the woman of this first world so whenever uh, uh, you see they wanted they could uh, go back to the uh, spiritual nature so once the flood came so what happened uh, all the giants uh, which were born to these uh, angels they perished in the flood because they did not have the super uh, angelic power to manifest and demanifest uh, from a spirit body to fleshly body so but <clears throat> if you see uh, the angels uh, when the flood came they changed over to the spiritual body and uh, escaped so where are they if you see they are bound in the earth atmosphere so in the first world the heavens were destroyed and the earth was destroyed that means the earthly atmosphere where satan and the fallen angels were ruling where they were coming in the flesh and going into the spiritual nature that was destroyed and on the earth if you see the giants were destroyed so since then the second world began so we see in the bible that uh, noah came out of the ark and uh, offered the sacrifice to the lord and he continued to do the first business uh, and the first uh, uh, you see uh, agriculture and uh, cultivation which he did in the first world so let us see what actually noah cultivated let us read genesis 9 20 and 21 can somebody read brother bishnu brother can you read okay this uh, uh, brother raju as i told uh, mm. better to give somebody to read yes okay. uncle we may see okay sir abo wale dekhna saknu hunna bhane please somebody else read please oh sure sure Bishnu, i'm sorry please. for my eyesight because uh, at the night time i'm unable to read because of my eyesight problem okay brother not a problem jai masi jai masi Okay, we'll tell other brother to read, brother. Okay, thank you. Okay. Nehemiah, yeah. brother, can you read, brother? Okay, sir. And Noah began to be an husbandman, and he planted a vineyard, and he drank of the wine, and was drunk on, and he was uncovered within his tent. Hmm. See, so Noah was uh, began to be husbandman. That means he was a husbandman. He was doing agriculture cultivation. and what did he cultivate if you see he had his own vineyard in that vineyard he always uh, used to have grape and you see and used to store it and uh, whenever he wanted he used to drink that uh, grape wine the fruit of that grape but uh, unfortunately after the flood noah continued to do the same thing but uh, this time the grape uh, juice or the wine what it kept it had got fermented and uh, it had become alcoholic you see and uh, noah without this knowledge uh, he drank the wine and what happened if you see he was totally you see intoxicated uh, and uh, he lost his senses in such a way that he lay naked in his tent uh, dear brethren some people take the excuse of uh, noah you see and they tell uh, See, but the Noah, the writer's person, he has drank. Ah, uh, he has drunk. He has drunk in such a way that uh, he fell uh, 
I was lying naked uh, in his tent. So I won't drink so much. I'll take only a little bit. So it's okay, no? But uh, what does the Bible say? Dear brethren, the wine and the liquor shop during those days in the Bible and during these days is totally different. You see, there in the Old Testament or in the Bible, the wine was actually the grape juice. But today, you see, the wine has got a different meaning, which is totally, completely based on alcoholic content. What does the Bible say? The Bible says that drunkard shall never enter the kingdom of God. They shall not enter the kingdom of God. So you take little or more or tight or loose or something, definitely you can't enter the kingdom of God. So whatever wine we see in the Bible, it is not actually fermented or alcoholic content. But today, all the, you see, the liquors that are sold in the liquor shops is all completely based on alcoholic content. Therefore, dear brethren, no one drank it without his knowledge. How? You see, no was a person who lived in both the world. He lived in the first world for a period of 600 years and he lived in the second world for a period of 350 years. So, in the first world, there was a water canopy surrounding the entire, you see, earth. But what happened uh, in the flood? Uh, you see, dear brethren, that water canopy was destroyed. Uh, so when the water canopy was there, the direct sun rays used to never hit the earth. But when this water canopy was destroyed, the direct sun rays used to hit the earth and fermentation process began and man's age began to decrease rapidly. Therefore, what happened? Noah did not know this one completely. Therefore, he drank without his knowledge. But there is no record in the Bible that Noah continued to drink. Therefore, you see, this can't be taken as an excuse to drink. Okay. In the second world, when Noah came out, Noah not only came out alone, he had three of his sons. And it is through these three of his sons that the entire world got populated. And who are the three of the sons? They are Shem, Ham and Japheth. And it is through these three sons that the whole world got populated. Therefore, these three sons represent the three important continents uh, of this world. So, let us read uh, and see and read uh, which son is of which continent. Let us read Genesis 9.25. Can uh, somebody read with us? Genesis 9.25. And he said, Cursed be Canaan, a servant of servants, shall he be unto his brethren. Mm, very good. So, cursed be Canaan, he shall be a servant of servants, and he be unto his brethren. Therefore, you see, it says, Cursed is Canaan. Therefore, dear brethren, these are the cursed class of people. And he shall be servants for servants, it seems. The whole mankind was fallen into sin. They were servants to sin. But these uh, Canaanites uh, were servants to these, uh, you see, the people who were under sin. It seems. So therefore, 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 then these uh, belong to which continent? If you see, they belong to the Africa continent. You see, uh, the Africa continent uh, people are the Canaanites. They are the cursed people. Therefore, if you see, they are in a very... You see, uh, color or what do you say, race or or a different, uh, you see, the people uh, compared to all the other generation, they are in a lot of sufferings. They are treated as slaves. We all know very well that uh, during the uh, many years before, they were treated as slaves and they used to have slave trade and all. But fortunately, after Abraham Lincoln and all these things and all, they were, these are all uh, the differentiation and discrimination between the white and the blacks are reduced. But... Yet, uh, this signifies the Africa continent people. Therefore, okay, now next, uh, what about Japheth? Who does Japheth represent? Let us read Genesis 9.27. Genesis 9.27. Nehemiah, brother, can you read? Okay, sir. God shall enlarge Japheth and he shall dwell in the tents of Sam and Canaan shall be his servant. Very good. See, God shall enlarge the uh, Japheth and he shall dwell in the tents of Shem, it seems. So he shall enlarge, he shall spread it seems. And Kanan shall be servants to him particularly. So who are this one? If you see, these are the Britishers. 
You see, these are the European continent people. So earlier when the world began, there was only three continent, Asia, Europe, and Africa. So these are the European continent people who established colonies all over the world. Therefore, if you see, they established colonies in Australia, you see India, Sri Lanka, Pakistan, Bangladesh, you see, huh? so many places in Africa, even America was invented by whom? Columbus, you see. Huh? So it was also because of the Europeans. They established colonies in all over the world and uh, uh, Africans were slaves to them. So they never dwelt in their tent, but they dwelt in different uh, places, uh, establishing the colonies, dear brethren. Okay. And uh, who does the Shamites represent? Let us read uh, Genesis 9.26. Genesis 9.26, Santosh Pariya. Uh, Jai Masih, brother. Can you read, brother? Okay. Uh, Ashish, brother, can you read? Sure, brother. And he said, Blessed be the Lord, God of sin, and Conan shall be servant. Very good. So, blessed be the Lord, God of Shem. That means uh, these are the God fearing people. Blessed be his God. So, God seeking people. Therefore, if you see all the religions have sprang up from Asia, these are the Asian people, Asian continent people. So, yes, dear brethren, these three sons through them, the three, you see, huh, continents have began to develop. And uh, during those days, all mankind used to have only one language. And because of the one language, they began to build a tower reaching, uh, you see, the sky. Why? Because they forget the promise of God, which God had made to Noah that in future I won't destroy the entire world at a time with a flood. Therefore, they began to forget this promise and began to build a tower. God confounded their language. Since then, dear brethren, all the people with particular language got segregated and settled in different, different places. Today in the world, you see, there are more than 2,500 languages. You see, like for example, in English we say mouth. Mouth, mouth means what? Mouth means our, you see, our mouth. Yeah? where we take the intake the food. But if it's the same thing, if it is spelt in English, Hindi, uh, what is the meaning of it? Mouth means what? Death. You see, there's so many misunderstandings uh, and so many words which are similar, but has got a different meaning. Different. So similarly, what happened? Uh, a particular people got settled in different, different places. And uh, as the second world continued, there was a very important person in the second world. Uh, and that important person was Abraham. Dear brother, God chose Abraham. Abraham was a very rich person. He had a lot of wealth, everything, you see. But the one thing Abraham lacked was a, a hair for his entire property. You see, he did not have a son. Therefore, at the age of 100 years, God gave him a blessed son named as Isaac. But a day came. God uh, wanted to test Abraham and told, uh, offer thine son, only son, thine loving son, you see, as a sacrifice to me on Mount Moriah. And uh, you see, Abraham never hesitated to offer his son as a sacrifice to uh, God. And uh, when he was supposed to slaughter his son, immediately God stopped him and made a very, very important promise. So let us read the promise in Genesis 22, 16 to 18. Nehemiah brother, can you read? Okay, sir. And said by myself, have I sworn, said the Lord, for because thou hast done this thing and has not has not withheld thee son, thine only son, that in blessing I will bless thee, and in multiplying I will multiply the his seed as the stars of the heaven and as the sand which is upon the sea shore, and this shall possess the gate of his enemies, and in this seat shall all the nations of the earth be blessed, because thou has obeyed my voice. Mm -hmm. Very good. So, therefore, you see, it says, uh, huh? in blessing I will bless thee. I will multiply thy seed as the stars of the heaven and as the sand of the seashore. In thy seed, the whole world shall be blessed. See, God promised two things. 
I will make the seed as the stars of the sky and sand of the seashore. Now, why did God make two things? Either one of the thing is innumerable, nobody can count it, it is infinite. The scientists say the stars are infinite. God could have just told only one thing, no. Why did he tell both the things? This represents two types of salvation, dear brother. God was trying to tell to Abraham that in thy seed, there will be two salvations. In thy seed, the whole world will be blessed in two ways. One will be like the, you see, stars of the heaven. That is heavenly salvation. How the stars are above. Similarly, the heavenly salvation is above. But there is also the sand of the seashore. The earthly salvation, dear Budren. Therefore, God was trying to say that uh, two types of people will be blessed. One will be of the heavenly salvation, will go to the heaven. One will be of the earthly salvation, will come to the earth. Therefore, who are the stars uh, and who are the sand class? Who go to the heavenly salvation? And who are the people who go to the earthly salvation? Dear brethren, all the people before Christ are like the sand of the seashore. They will come to the earthly salvation. They can never go to the heavenly salvation. Only after Jesus coming and dying on the cross, the heavenly salvation door was opened, dear brethren. Therefore, you, you might uh, you see wonder, and uh, if I tell who is the greatest person of all the people who were ever born till Jesus first advent, uh, you might tell uh, it's Abraham himself, it's David, uh, you see, it's Moses, uh, it's Elia, it is Samson. Uh, you see, there are so many other people in the world uh, the great, great warriors. Uh, so, who was the greatest of all these people? You see, let us read what the Bible say. Matthew 11.11. 11. Can uh, Santosh brother read? Santosh brother, you are there online. Can you read? Is it okay? Okay. Uh, okay I will read it, brother. I read, please read. Verily I say unto you, among them that are born of women, there hath not risen a greater than John the Baptist. Now, notwithstanding, he that is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. Very good, brother. So, it says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, among them that are born of women, you see, there is none greater than John the Baptist. Okay? Say, there is none greater than John the Baptist. John the Baptist was the greatest of all the person. And what does he say? Notwithstanding. Though he may be great among all the people who have ever born this earth, but those who go to the heavenly salvation, the least, the last member is still greater than John the Baptist. So what does it mean? It means among all the people who are born on earth till Jesus' first advent, John the Baptist is the greatest. There is no doubt. But can he go to the heavenly salvation if you see? No. The last and the least member who come to the heavenly salvation is still greater than John the Baptist. That means what? John the Baptist is still lower. That means he will be on the earthly salvation. It clearly proves that all the people before Christ can never go to the heavenly salvation. Okay. Now, is there any Bible proof? Did uh, Jesus say that uh, nobody has gone to heaven? Is there any proof in the Bible? Yes. Let us read John 3, 13. John 3, 13. Nehemiah, brother, can you read John 3, 13? You are not. And no man hath ascended up to heaven, but he that came down from heaven, even the Son of Man, which is in heaven. Uh -huh. You see, no man hath ascended to heaven. You see, no man has gone to heaven. That's what Jesus said, not me. But Jesus said, only Son of Man has come from heaven. Nobody has gone to heaven, dear brethren. Then uh, where are the, all the people? Dear brethren, the Bible says that all are in the grave. They will all come up only at the second advent of our Lord. What about David? Did he go to heaven? Let us read Acts 2.34. Acts 2.34, brother. Nehemiah, brother, can you read? Can you read all these three verses? For David is not ascended into the heavens, but he said himself, The Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thou on my right hand. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven wait, wait, wait. with the sound. One by one, brother. One by one. So it says, David is not ascended to heaven. That's what Jesus said. 
nobody has gone to heaven so when will the dead rise first now read brother first is 416 brother nehemiah brother for the lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout with the voice of the archangel archangel and with the trump of god and the dead in christ shall rise first aha uh -huh. then the dead in christ shall rise first after the second third and all is later so when will this happen only at the return of our lord in second coming what did jesus say this is what jesus said read john 5:28 now read brother john 5:28 read brother marvel not at this for the hour is coming in the which all that are in the graves shall hear his voice and shall come forth aha uh -huh. marvel not all that are in the grave everybody are in the grave dear brother and they will all come back only at the resurrection so what is the reward so what will god give them in the resurrection dear brother and you see god will give uh, not better than the church the church is promised the heavenly salvation they promised the earthly salvation let us read hebrews 11 chapter verse 39 and 40 brother hebrews 11 chapter 39 and 40 Santosh Pariyar. Brother, you are there? Can you read? Is it possible? Okay. Okay. Somebody else can read. Hebrew 11.35 Women received their dead, raised to life again, and others were tortured, not accepting deliverance, that they might obtain a better resurrection. Mm, that is the promise. That is the reward. A better resurrection what is it mean by better resurrection that means they'll go to heaven ah heavenly resurrection ah no it says better resurrection now read 39 and 40 same chapter verse 39 and 40 brother uh, read ashish brother okay brother okay please wait Uh, read brother you can read from the screen also name brother read or uh, santosh brother and these all having obtained a good report through faith received not the promise god having provided some better thing for us that they without us should not be made perfect uh -huh. you see what does it say all these things have these have obtained a good report through faith they got a good report but did they receive the promise the reward no but god has promised something better for us that means what we are promised heavenly salvation they promised earthly salvation so there are two salvations heavenly and earthly the heavenly salvation is only for the church the earthly salvation is only for the you see the people who lived before christ let us read with her see everybody think that there was a heavenly salvation from beginning no it began only for more death of our jesus Let us read few verses. Hebrews ten twenty. Hebrews ten twenty, brother. Hmm. By a new and living way which He hath consecrated for us through the veil, that that is to say, His place. Uh huh. See a new and the living way which He has consecrated for us. How through the veil? That is to say. is flesh dear brethren so that living way you see the heavenly way was only open after the death of jesus you remember when jesus did what happened the veil in the temple got tore that is when the heavenly salvation access was open no how can we go to heaven without our lord he is our hero he is our role model he is our master he is our shepherd he is our you see the A captain of our salvation. Read, brother. Hebrews three one, brother. Hebrews three one. Wherefore, can I see on the screen? Oh, one minute. Ah, uh, sorry, brother. Ah. Uh. Wherefore, holy brethren, part partakers of the heavenly calling, consider the apostle and high priest of our. 
profession Christ Jesus. She partakers of heavenly calling. Uh, that was when it began the brethren. So, what is the reward for the heavenly salvation? What are they going to do? You see, those who go to the heavenly salvation, if you see the church go for the heavenly salvation and rule with our Lord Jesus Christ for a thousand years. Read Revelation chapter 20, verse 6. Please open your Bibles and see. Revelation chapter 20, verse 6. We all know, no? Jesus will return the second coming and he will rule on this earth for a period of thousand years. Read with her. Revelation 20, chapter 20, verse 6. Who can read? Ashish Vidar, Nehemiah Vidar. And I saw thrones and they sat on them and judgment was committed to them. Then I saw the souls of those who had been beheaded for their witness to Jesus and for the word of God who had who hadn't uh, brother, you got muted. Nehemiah brother, your mm -hmm. audio is mute. It's okay, brother. I will read Revelation 26. Mm. 26. Blessed and holy is he that had part in the first resurrection. On such the second death had no power, but they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. See, mm brother? -hmm. They shall rule with Christ for a thousand years. Uh -huh. They shall rule. The church shall rule with Christ for a thousand years, dear brother. This is the reward for the church. Where? Not on earth, heavenly ruling with Jesus. So church will be with him on the heavenly, you see, part rule for with him for a thousand years. But who will be on the earth? Who will take the administration activities on the earth? Dear Budran, these will be taken care by the people of the Old Testament. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, you know, all those faithful ancient warriors. Where will they go? They will all come up in earthly salvation. How? Why? You see, now this world is being you know, taken care and the world administration is being done by the prince of this world. Who is it? The devil himself. Dear Buddha, the devil is the one who is ruling this world. And how is he ruling? Is he literally coming to everybody's house face to face? Can we see him? No. He is invisible in the Sky. Earth atmosphere is there only. We can't see him. From there, he is controlling everybody invisibly, you see. And let us read with her. Ephesians 2 2. Nehemiah, read. Ephesians 2 2. Ephesians 2 2. You can read from the display. Nehemiah, brother, you're there? Uh. Wherein in time past he walked according to the course of his old, according to the prince of the power of the year, the spirit that now worked in the children of disobedience. Ah, you see, the prince of the power of the air, uh -huh. the spirit too, that worketh in disobedience. Oh, that means he's invisibly ruling. Uh -huh. Now is he ruling directly, yeah. Uh? Through his human representatives. Now, who are they? Who are the human representatives of this earth? The corrupt ministers. So, this is the present evil world. Satan is ruling invisibly from the heaven, from the earth atmosphere, sky. On earth, who is there? Eh? These corrupt ministers and all, uh -huh, through them, he is ruling. Christ, when he is going to return, he is going to destroy this system. And instead of this system, he is going to establish his system. Now, who, is, who will be the rulers? Jesus Christ and the church on the heavenly part from the sky. But on the earth, who will be taking care of the administration? These are the Old Testament warriors. Let us read Psalms 45.16. It is given in Psalms 45.16, brother. Psalms 45.16. Okay, can somebody read? Ashish brother, Nehemiah brother. Huh? Instead of the fathers shall be the children whom thou mayst make princes in all the earth. 
Uh -huh. so instead of thy fathers shall be thy children. Whom thou makest a princess in all the earth. Instead of thy father. It's actually telling about Jesus. Instead of uh, they being fathers to Jesus, they will be Jesus' children when? Second Advent. When Jesus came at the first Advent, Abraham, David were all fathers to Jesus. Therefore, Jesus was called as son of uh, David. But when Jesus returned the second coming to rule on this earth, uh, what will Abraham be to Jesus? Abraham will become a child. David will become a son to Jesus. Uh, not that Jesus will become the, the son of David. Uh, therefore, that's what the verse says. But in the earth, God shall make them princess systems on all the world. The administration activity will be taken care of these princes, the ancient worthies that are mentioned in Hebrews 11 chapter. Like for example, today there are a lot of departments, government department, you see food department, navy department, aviation department, forest department, finance department, so many things are there. So who will take care? If you see it, in Christ kingdom, all these activities, you see, shall be taken care by one of the ancient worthies. Uh -huh. So how? Who? Who will take care of what activity if you see the Bhutan? The Bhutan. Huh? Food department will be taken care by one. Aviation department will be taken care by one person. Naval department by one person. Like for example, who can be given the food department in charge if you see it can be given to Joseph because Joseph in the Old Testament took care of the famine in Israel for seven, for in Egypt for seven years. He supplied food for the whole world. So if this can be given without any corruption, you will, you will see, take care of it. Then ship, navy, who can be given? Noah. Noah was in the ark. Uh, he had the experience. Then flight. Who can be given the in charge of flight? Elia. Uh, he was taken off now. Uh, Enoch. Uh, forest department. Uh -huh. So many people are there who know about the forest. Noah himself. This is how God's kingdom shall be established on earth. So when Jesus returns, he is going to destroy this uh, second world. You see, how will we destroy the second world? How will he destroy this heaven and the earth which are uh, ruled by Satan and uh, you see, the corrupt ministers, how will he destroy it? If you see, in Second Peter, 3rd chapter, 7th verse, it clearly says, but the heavens and the earth, which are now by the same word, are kept in store, reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. So, this is how the second world will be destroyed by fire. Fire means what? Everywhere bombing, all those things. And no, this is not little fire, dear brethren, because little fire can destroy buildings, but it can't destroy the selfishness and evil in man. If this has to be destroyed, it can be destroyed only by God's anger. Therefore, in Zephaniah 3 8, if you see, you see, huh? the God's anger and wrath is compared to fire in the Bible. Okay, let us read Zephaniah 3 8. Santosh Pudar, can you read Zephaniah 3 8? Can you read from the screen? Santosh Pudar, can you read? You're there? Zephaniah 3 8. Santosh Pudar. Okay. Ashish Pudar, can you read Zephaniah 3 8? Shephaniah 3 8 verse, brother. Mm -hmm. Ah, you can read from the screen, brother. Yes. Okay. Therefore, wait ye upon me, said the Lord, until the day that I rise up to the pre, for my determination is to gather the nations, that I may assemble the kingdoms to pour upon them my indignation, even all my fear anger, for all the earth shall be devoured with the fire of my jealousy. Uh -huh. I will pour upon them my indignation. Fire indignation, uh -huh. jealousy. In this fire only, God shall destroy this uh, uh, second world, not the literal earth. Uh. In the first world, was the literal earth destroyed? No. The corrupt system. Similarly, the corrupt system only will be destroyed. 
this earth remains forever and ever ecclesiastes 14 santosh pada you there can you read ecclesiastes 14 one, one generation hmm. passes away and another generation came but the earth abided forever earth abided forever you see earth abided forever nobody can destroy this earth only the system that is the thing that is going to be destroyed so after the destruction of this uh, second world how the third world will be there what are things are going to happen we are going to see in the next coming week okay so hope you all understood if you still have any doubts any questions you can please ask me